Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. NVDIMM, it's a new technology, storage class memory. You're hearing all these words start to pop out, but we've got flash. What do we need more of this for? Well, it's real simple. You need lower and lower latency. We need to improve performance, and one of the best ways to do that is to eliminate or reduce latency. The challenge is, is how do we manage all this different type of technology? One of the missing ingredients here is software. If, without the right software, we're going to have to go in and custom write every single application for a specific type of memory technology, and that just won't scale. Joining me to talk about this on the whiteboard, I've invited Amit Golander. He is the CTO and founder of Plexistore. Amit, thanks for joining us today. Happy to be here, George. Hey, before we jump into this, I got a whole bunch of questions uh, for you on this. Tell me a little bit about Plexistore. Sure. So Plexistore is a software company. Um, started two years ago. Uh, it's basically uh, the sole purpose of Plexistore is to provide better service, uh, higher efficiency, better user experience, uh, easier to, to program, and then basically simply hide this entire uh, complexity from you. Well, and I think that that's a really interesting point because as you look at the, the stack we're building out here, what you've got drawn up here is hard drives that can go uh, faster but also can be cheaper. We've got solid state that can cover a range, and then we've got, we've got a whole different uh, set of variants in NVDIMM or storage class memory today. And so we're sort of recreating some of the complexity we had back in the whole hard drive days. Let's start first with, I think for a lot of our viewers, they're not real clear on NVDIMM. And so you've got two types of general NVDIMM, and then within that there's some stuff. Talk a little bit about just NVDIMM in general. Right, so non-volatile DIMM or NVDIMM uh, is basically a new form factor, right? Uh, you can plug it, you, you, you take the card itself and you plug it not on the I.O. subsystem, but you actually plug it uh, instead of volatile memory on the memory subsystem. And what that does for you is basically uh, the, the memory subsystem is optimized for, late, for latency, for low latency specifically. Right. And uh, uh, the I.O. subsystem is optimized for throughput. Okay. And so that gives me, and that makes sense here because the, this technology essentially looks like a, almost like a DRAM module in some cases, correct? Exactly. And, and so putting it there, I've got essentially, if you will, a dedicated network for this technology. Is that fair? Yeah, so basically what you're achieving uh, is you get the lowest latency possible between the CPU and your application to the storage device. And that's, that's really critical as I start to try to move things up as far as performance and reduce latency is get as close to the CPU as I possibly can, right? Right, so you're not, well, depending on the case, right, you have NVDIMM F, which is F for flash, uh, and that's still a block-based storage device just like SSDs and hard drives, mm -hmm. just in a better location. Right. And then you have NVDIMM-N, which is byte addressable and maps to the address space that the application can approach without any uh, software in between. And so what is it, what's the advantage of being byte addressable? Is that, is that an efficiency thing? Uh, NVDIMM-N is the perfect match for SCM, for storage class memory. Okay. Uh, you have different uh, technology an announced, right? You have a, th a 3D cross point. And then you have a RERAM, depending on which, uh, and you have a STT MRAM, right? Okay. And these are different types of storage class memory? These are different families of storage class memories. Okay. Those are, are denser, high density and lower cost. These are faster. Okay. Uh, so you, as, if you're here on this front, you're basically uh, exactly at DRAM speed. Okay. Uh, if you're on this, uh, on this front, you're basically uh, paying off with some latency penalty and uh, gaining a dollar per gigabyte. Okay, right? so it's, it's very similar here in that we're paying, either gonna pay a little extra to go faster or we're gonna save some money and be more dense. Right, so, so NVDIMM is not a different uh, uh, case, right? We are still gonna have trade-offs within the technology. Okay, the family. you almost need sort of like a, a software-defined memory here, just like we have software-defined storage to manage all these different types, right? Exactly. Um, what you have today is you have uh, everything, the entire storage uh, assumes that you need a block layer. Right. right? Uh, another assumption is that you need software caching. So basically storage is always uh, cached within DRAM. Okay. And those two assumptions uh, with, uh, alongside several others are basically what's wrong with the software stack today. Okay. I mean, you ha the software stack today it was basically built for these guys. Uh, it assumes that the media itself is going to be slow. Uh, so you can stack several software layers within that. Uh, you can put it over the network or not. 
Um, you need the block level uh, granularity because that's what these medias had anyway. Right, sure. Um, and then you were, you were using software caching. So you could still use the, the, the current software stack. It just doesn't really shine on, on NVIDIA's. Okay. You're so not getting your, your bang for the buck. So it's not as efficient and you're not, you're not taking advantage of the full capabilities here. Exactly. Okay. The, the other end of the spectrum, by the way, is uh, there are several applications that actually uh, took this and wrote specifically to, to the devices. Okay. Right? But in that case, the, uh, first of all, you have to rewrite your application, which most people don't like. Right. Well, and again, uh, that becomes a scale issue as well, right? Because you get, you'd have to, I would assume if you rewrote your application, you have to rewrite it for every flavor of this too, or would it be general? Uh, so, so depending on the, on the package around that, and depending on the model itself. Okay. But for some, you do. Uh, the other disadvantage is that you, like in memory compute today, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those frameworks, uh, you basically can't really scale or you really uh, drop in performance when you go beyond this. Oh, so you can't come back the other direction and, and save even more money. Right, that's why you see uh, a lot of those uh, uh, middleware, basically the first recommendation is do not exceed, the active works it does not exceed the memory side. Ah, okay, huh, interesting. So obviously then what we were talking about here with uh, kind of software defined memory would mm -hmm. enable more portability and flexibility, how would that work? A software defined memory or a, a good one, right, should basically virtualize the entire thing. Right? Okay. You want to have the application to have a near memory experience in the in the performance front, and then uh, the cost structure of let's say you know around around the, the right hand side somewhere. So either flash yeah. the hard drives or something like that. Exactly. Now, would would the software defined memory uh, capability automatically move data between these different types, or is that something you would program? How would that work? Uh, that depends on the SDM implementation itself, okay. right? Uh, in our case, uh, we auto tier between those. Uh, so it's done automatically, the user is not aware of it. Obviously there are some hints they can provide sure. that those, those exist in POSIX today. So okay, that, that's great then. So software-defined memory instead of software-defined storage is going to allow us to have sort of a, a virtual view into all these different resources. What are some of the key takeaways or values that for the different uh, types of people that would use this? So the value um, can really change upon what you want to do with this. Right? Okay. I mean, you can on one hand uh, run uh, uh, in-memory compute just with larger data sets okay. uh, or cheaper prices. Uh, on the other hand, you can run legacy applications and just accelerate them. Right? But basically, when, you, when it comes to value, it really depends on who you're talking about to. Okay. Uh, and I can think of three different users within the organization. Okay. Uh, so one would be the end user. Uh, one would be the IT administrator, uh, and the third one would basically be the application developer. Okay. If, if someone like that exists in the organization. So, what would be the advantages for the end user? So, the end user will basically see uh, lower latency, like an order of magnitude lower latency. So, uh, I would basically say better user experience. Right? If you're sending a transaction, you wait less for that. Uh, if you're launching a website, you wait less for for um, for MongoDB, for example. Okay. Queries. Okay, how about uh, for the IT administrator? So the, the IT administrator doesn't realize today, but they're paying like half of the resources uh, for inefficiency, for storage inefficiency. So now, I mean, if you're using this, this side of the equation, mm -hmm. let's, let's even focus on SSDs. Right. Uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, wait time for the CPU. Uh, and because of that, there are context switches and you know, other applications are launched at the same core. Okay. Uh, that which creates memory pressure and, and so on and so forth and so on. Uh, another aspect is the storage stack itself, the traditional storage stack itself is pretty deep okay. and, and just going through that and doing things asynchronously uh, is inefficient. Okay. So, so, what we basically so we're not getting the best bang for our buck here basically is what it sounds like to me. Right, so you don't see that on the SSD front or the storage media itself, but you okay. see it in the overall price of the server. Gotcha. What we've basically shown is that you can run the same, even if CPU intensive application like OLTP, and you can basically gain uh, twice the performance on the same machine while still getting you know, an order of magnitude uh, better performance for the end user. Gotcha, okay, and then how about for the app developer? So application developers are, um, have to consider, good application developers have to consider a lot of trade-offs when they write code, mm -hmm. storage trade-offs in, in particular. Um, for, you know, a simple example would be uh, synchronous versus asynchronous writes. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, asynchronous is really fast, but on the other hand, uh, it puts the data at risk. Okay. And then uh, the programmer has to decide per I.O. if they want to do that uh, 
in, a, in a fast way or in a safe way, right? And that takes time, obviously, all, and, and puts the data at risk if they make mistakes. Sure. Uh, in, when you're using NVIDIA technology, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can do synchronous, you can do asynchronous. The, the, sometimes it's even better to do uh, synchronous. Okay. So, so you can just forget about those trade-offs and just uh, do whatever you want. Same thing goes to um, data granularity, small files versus uh, large files, um, the metadata operations versus data operations, and all those you know, complexities basically uh, uh, go away or at least you, know, you can ignore them. Okay, so it basically just makes their life a lot easier as far as having to worry about all that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Well, Amit, thanks very much for joining us on the whiteboard today. Thank you, George. So there you have it. As we move into this new era of storage class memory, we're going to need technology that, or software that will allow us to move easily between these different tiers. If we're forced to have to rewrite applications for specific technologies, that's really going to hurt our ability to scale as well as our overall flexibility. So this technology will allow you to really virtualize this environment and make it much more efficient and easier to use and certainly more efficient than current technology today. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.